After several years of planning, a team of global underwater explorers arrives in the Solomon Islands to dive the USS Atlanta. A light cruiser designed to provide anti-aircraft protection for U.S. naval task groups during World War II. The ship served in this capacity in the naval battles of Midway and the Eastern Solomons. She was severely damaged in a night surface action on November 13, 1942, during the naval battle of Guadalcanal. The next day, the U.S. Navy took the decision to scuttle her in Savo Sound. The Solomon Islands is located in the South Pacific, east of Papua New Guinea. It consists of nearly 1,000 islands, the island of Guadalcanal being the largest. This is a very unique part of the world, the Solomon Islands. Not only has Guadalcanal got some amazing history in terms of what occurred here during World War II. And for us as divers, the diving is outstanding. It really is world class. One of the things for me that makes it quite unique is the fact that a lot of the diving is outside of recreational depth ranges. So as a result, while you're diving wrecks in this area, you're visiting a part of nature that not many people have seen, if any at all. I think that's quite a rare opportunity. Diving Atlanta for me is a personal uh, goal. It's been on, on the list of targets for me for more than 15 years. The reason why I wanted to dive her in the first place is that it's a big capital warship. It has an interesting story. It's a challenge to dive it because it's deep and very few people have ever dived her. The role of the USS Atlanta in the pivotal naval battle of Guadalcanal took the lives of 172 men, including the life of Admiral Norman Scott, one of only three admirals to have been killed in action in the history of the U.S. Navy during World War II. The head of the project over the past couple of months, I actually did some research on the, the, the battle here on Guadalcanal. And I think a lot of that, a lot of the history and the movies uh, speaks to the battle that actually took place on land and the uh, Marines holding Henderson Field, which as an American was extremely uh, important for the World War II campaign. However, at the same time, I don't think as much emphasis has been placed on the naval battle of Guadalcanal, which I think is a story that needs to be told as well because of the chaotic nature of it and uh, Atlanta being one of the casualties. And Atlanta is pretty unique because in addition just to being historically significant, Battle of Midway, one of the very first of a unique uh, light cruiser class, torpedo uh, launching capacity, things that make her unique as a ship. She was also unique because she was involved in the takeover of the airstrip here, which was significant in the transition of the movement for the Allied forces moving to the offensive. The Japanese tried repeatedly to take this territory and to retake the airfield, but were eventually unsuccessful, spent tremendous resources, significant loss of life, and finally gave up. And most historians credit that the holding of this area as significant. Atlanta was part of the taking, and she was in the next to last battle prior to the Japanese giving up when she was sunk. The USS Atlanta is resting at 130 meters, a challenging depth for even the most experienced technical diver. GUE has a, a large contingent of international uh, divers, and we drew in this case a, a small select team that had a variety of uh, general diving capacity, cave diving experience because of the overhead potential, videography, photography, a team that's used to working together that has good experience in those kinds of environments. Anytime you're diving below 120 meters and you're putting three or four people in the water, uh, there's a lot of variables and there's a lot of uh, things you need to be on the lookout for. Uh, one of the big things that people don't realize in addition to the diving that actually takes place are all the logistics that have to occur out of the water, all the gas mixing and all the equipment preparation and making sure everything's analyzed being able to uh, take advantage of the standardized platform that Global Underwater Explorers has developed over the past uh, 10 plus years and then actually put it to use here as part of one of these projects uh, makes it that much safer and that much more efficient. Diving in, in deep water conditions uh, create a logistical problem because you consume a lot more gas due to the increased depth so the gas is compressed and you breathe a lot more a lot faster. So diving conventional scoop creates uh, a problem in carrying enough gas. The rebreather eliminates that problem because now you're, you're using very little amount of gas on the dive itself. Clearly on deep dives like this, the additional 
risk associated with complexity of the unit is far outweighed by the ability to go down and not worry about the amount of gas you're consuming. To date, the actual state of the Atlanta wreck has never been fully ascertained. We've had varying reports from different people about the condition of the wreck. Uh, so we're excited, we're nervous, uh, it's a little bit of anticipation. Uh, particularly I feel quite a lot of it after uh, inviting all these guys to come all the way to the Pacific, to the Solomon Islands and fingers crossed it's in good conditions. I have no idea what the wreck will be like. I mean, if you uh, look back to history, it's been so hammered up by both sides that it can be either a beautiful wreck or it can be like a pile of iron rubbish. I'm really very curious and excited. The team prepares for the first dive of the project. Today it's just a two-man team. Richard and I are going to drop down and the objective is to tie in the uh, anchor line or mooring line so that we have a secure reference for ascending and descending onto the wreck throughout the whole project. We also test all the uh, surface procedures. We built a deco station, test the equipment and get a general idea of what uh, the conditions are. And we plan to go and have a, a quick scout around the wreck. We're fortunate enough that we've got some uh, underwater scooters with us. While working at these sort of depths, it's important not to be working too aggressively. We also will use this day to check how everything works, if we are comfortable to, uh, to take some of the big equipment with us for GP to film and for me to uh, kind of be a safety diver for him. I'm very excited to be able to do these dives. And um, the feeling you have when, when you have <laughs> waited for something for 15 years and actually go down there is very hard to describe, but it's uh, excitement, it's uh, intense, it's joy, all of these things mixed, uh, but it's a healthy mix. So it makes you tense, but, but also very, very happy. We're extremely excited and looking forward to the opportunity and diving it. However, at the same time, it is also uh, going to be a very sobering experience due to the fact that there are still 157 souls still on board. After four hours in the water, Liam and Richard at last resurface from the dive. The rest of the team is eager to hear about the condition of the wreck. That's huge. We only saw like, such a small section of it, but the, the bulk of it, the superstructure, is massive. Man. Yeah, I thought it'd be a lot smaller. The first dive of uh, the expedition was uh, a success. Conditions are very nice out there. Visibility of the wreck from about 80 meters, so uh, visibility down there is, is excellent. Came across onto the deck side and we scooted down towards the stern uh, where the stern section is broken up. The most notable things we saw were the dual mount guns. Both guns are still pointing upwards. With the anchor line in place, the team is now ready to spend the next five days diving the USS Atlanta. Obviously there was a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of uh, nervousness as we first hit the water, but at around uh, 80, 85 meters, the conditions were good, the currents were cooperating with us. Just to see that big hull sort of appear out of the darkness as we descended through 80 meters on our way to about 120 meter depth. Just really was exciting. And the teammates, we were just looking at each other, started to scream underwater. It's a fantastic experience when this wreck just comes into view and, well, you just love it. Very intense. She's sitting somewhat magically on the bottom, uh, waiting for people to come and, and appreciate her part in history. One of the targets of the expedition team is to provide answers to some of the questions about Atlanta's final hours and ultimate demise. One of the goals is to shoot video of uh, the place where the Admiral actually died uh, when Atlanta was hit by friendly fires from uh, San Francisco. From the stern section we can clearly see where the prop shaft comes out from the hull. When it hit the bottom it received some serious impact. At the end of the prop shafts we have the propellers themselves, both of them are still in place. We came across 
across the torpedo tubes. Some nice feature of that is the actual torpedoes are still inside the tubes themselves, indicating they weren't launched during the battle. Anytime you're maneuvering around warships with live munitions, you have to be particularly careful. Both funnels are still there. These funnels are made from stainless steel, so they're both in extremely good condition lying in the sand. The team identify an area which they believe to be the bridge. As we were heading forward on the, on the wreck towards the bow area, we cruised over the battle station and also the bridge area. Both of those compartments of the wreck has been severely damaged. And this area is of course interesting because not only is this where the action took place during the battle, this is where the ship was commanded and so on, but this is also where the Admiral actually lost his life in the end. Around the bridge area there are these quite unusual cabinets. We're not really sure what they are as of yet. That was pretty cool to see that, considering the amount of damage that's on the actual bridge itself. It received a lot of hits, and there's a few of these cabinets that are still perfectly intact. How was it? That was fantastic. Yeah. This project fits perfectly with GUE's uh, three formational principles, exploration, education, and conservation. From a conservation point of view, because wrecks are consistently degrading, we can't really catch them and stop that degrading, but we can capture them on video, which is one of the things that we're trying to do so that future generations will have the ability to also uh, experience diving the Atlanta in a virtual sense and uh, also just to sort of see and remember the history of Atlanta. In addition to documenting the wreck on video, the team is also taking note on some of the ecological problems being caused by the wrecks in the area. As you can see, there's a fairly significant oil sheen on the water today. We can taste the oil in the water, you can smell it, you can see it. It's a little unfortunate from an environmental standpoint. The wreck's been down almost 70 years and it's still slowly leaking oil to the surface. So that's not only a concern here, but all over the South Pacific with the war wrecks. So it's one of those things we wanted to be able to confirm as part of this project. GUE has additional motives for organizing technical dive expeditions such as this one. One of the goals for this project is to get the new generation up to speed. So we have Liam, we have Kareem and JP. We're going to be diving until we're 80, so don't worry. <laughs> but it's good to see that young generation coming up and do this exploration type of dives also. Liam told me about this project probably three years ago when everything was put together, resources, team, we found ourselves here. The guys went there for the first time and said the wreck is incredible. I started to really expect to dive. I really wanted to hit the water finally. And when I saw it for the first time, it was like, like really fantastic wreck, one of the best wrecks I've ever seen. The team takes a day to reflect upon the significance of their discoveries. The entire island resembles an open air war museum. Remnants of the battle are to be found everywhere, and there's no shortage of memorials to the fallen soldiers. I think uh, what those guys went through in 1942 to to both take and hold this, uh, this island and how pivotal that was. And then you uh, take a look around at a lot of the different sites we went to th today, and you realize that somewhere between 30 and 40,000 people lost their lives on this island. Uh, probably about uh, a fourth of them, uh, Americans or our allies. So to come halfway around the world and see this firsthand and sort of be walking through history is very moving. At the end of the project, the GUE expedition team is gratified with their accomplishments. Dives to extreme depths like this uh, with long bottom times always pushes uh, not only your own capacities, but also the team capacity and the support capacity. So I think what we have learned from this project is uh, how to set up a project like this quickly, to have all the key personnel work together as one unit and make that happen in a reasonably short time. 
of the planned six days of diving, we were able to put uh, divers in the water every day. I was lucky, so I had a chance to dive five out of those six days. I'm unfortunate, I'm very happy. Coming to the end of a successful project like this, naturally the conversations are always orientated around the next project we're going to organize, the next adventure we're going to go on, and I certainly plan to organize more in this region. After all we've accomplished this week, there's a tremendous sense of personal uh, accomplishment. I, mean, I think uh, all of us have a lot to be proud of. Our organization really focuses heavily on teamwork, and a project like this helps that team experience resonate. In the end of the day, I'm just grateful that all of those people ensure to uh, maintain a focused determination to bring it all together. Uh, everybody involved in the project, uh, from filming crew to project organizers to sponsors, you know, ultimately made something come together that was very special and will have a lasting influence on all of the team members.